Hey friends, today we're covering 12 tools or web apps that the modern marketer, the creator, the side hustler needs to know about and potentially be using as well. So we have a long list ahead of us, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. The number one app on my list is Notion. And if you've been a regular on the channel, you know already that I do love Notion. I've been using Notion for the past um, year or maybe even a little longer than that. And the reason why I love it so much is that it has replaced so many other applications that I was using to uh, create documents, save documents for project management, for collaboration, for task assignment, for calendar, reminder purposes, and all of that. So now that I said that, you can guess what this app is all about. It is basically an all-in-one workspace for you and your team. It really enables you to do a lot of things within one single app. You can use relational databases, you can create documentations, you can organize your thoughts, you can um, you know, write your study material, you can do everything that relates to your work, you can use it alone, you can use it with a team, and so much more. So I really, really like it, and not only me, but there's actually a huge uh, community of ambassadors and advocates that talk about Notion and that have um, I guess promoted and strengthened the tool even further. There are people that are making money that have created businesses around uh, Notion courses, templates, and all of that. I'm actually gonna have something on the screen right now. I recently saw that someone made their first 10K a month uh, by creating Notion templates, and he's only 19 years old. I just couldn't believe it. Like, there is so much opportunity. And so, the reason why I'm sharing these tools is not for you to use these in. Um, in the teams that you work with, but maybe you're gonna start something from scratch. You're gonna start a side hustle or you're gonna, I don't know, you're gonna become an entrepreneur. You're gonna build a team and this is what you're gonna use to work with them. So these are all tools that are really versatile, but I just want to give you the idea that you can use this in multiple purposes and multiple, uh, I guess, business cases. Second tool that I wanna talk about is super, I don't know if you've heard about it. I, for me, it's pretty new as well, but as soon as I've heard, as soon as I uh, saw that super exists, I was instantly a fan of it because it basically enables you to create simple web pages using only Notion. And because I'm a Notion user already, and because I really dislike uh, spending lots of time building websites, using complex CMS, or the maintenance of complex websites, I'm really all about simplifying uh, business processes and anything that relates to my business, actually. Uh, so when I found out about Super, that was just so, so helpful because I was trying to create a landing page for my upcoming course. And this was about the time when I wanted to kind of get the word out and announce that the waitlist was open. When I realized that Super works with Notion and I could create a website within a matter of minutes, I was instantly drawn. So I created the website that you're seeing right now on the screen and I basically spent maybe a couple of minutes to do the integration with the Notion uh, page. I set up the SEO settings and the domain settings. I checked out the domain settings. You can actually use it with a custom domain or you can use it with a default URL that um, Super gives you. And I think both are fine, to be honest. If you're gonna use a custom domain, then that is perfectly fine because then it looks even more professional. I actually do have the custom domain for break into marketing, but I, I just didn't want to use it at that point. Um, I was kind of in a hurry and I didn't know if I would stick around with the tool for long enough. Uh, anyway, so what I really like about it is that it, it's really easy to use and if any of you are familiar with Squarespace, I found that the dashboard is actually quite similar to the Squarespace dashboard. The settings and the look of it, it's quite similar in my opinion. I know obviously Squarespace is a lot more complex, but still I found that the user interface is a little bit familiar. Third tool is Airtable. This is one I really love. It's so versatile. You can do so many things with Airtable. 
Uh, but first of all, I want to ask you, do any of you remember the days when knowing SQL was a required skill in a lot of job posts, especially uh, the, the posts around business or marketing or sales? It would be an essential skill to have. And thanks to uh, tools like Airtable that focus on or simplify creating relational databases, it basically simplifies all of that and removes the need to know SQL altogether. Airtable is a low code database and collaboration tool you can use with your teams. Again, if you're on your own, you can use it on your own too. But if you wanted to do it collaboratively, then this is a tool that enables you to do that. Uh, as I mentioned, it is extremely versatile. You can create databases to solve all kinds of business needs and you can create automations too. Um, there are so many examples or tutorials on YouTube or other resources to do uh, those integrations and make uh, Airtable work with other um, web apps. Uh, you can manage your work, you can track and organize inventories, you can create content calendars, you can plan events, uh, you can create job boards, you can do all sorts of things. And I haven't personally created that many databases in Airtable. I've just kind of attempted, but now because I'm a Notion user, I create all my databases in Notion uh, and I haven't needed something a little more complex or different tool uh, to replace Notion yet. But the interface is really simple, it's colorful, it's friendly, and basically anyone can use it uh, and create databases within minutes. As I said, there are so many tutorials available online one channel that I'm gonna recommend you to check out if you are uh, an Airtable user or if you consider uh, starting to use Airtable uh, from after watching this video, Aaron Cornbilt's YouTube channel that's called Automate All The Things um, is a great resource for you to check out. Aaron is responsible for education at Airtable, so he actually works in Airtable and he is creating educational uh, videos and tutorials where he does a lot of live streams as as well with other people and solves their problems or creates databases for their uh, business needs or business cases. So I highly recommend checking his channel if uh, you are going to be using Airtable. Next tool you need to know and be using is Zapier. It is so helpful. If you're not already using Zapier, I'm sure that you're gonna get inspired to start using it after watching this video. It is basically an automation tool between web apps. It connects different apps. You can transfer information between those apps. So basically it enables you to move information between web apps and enables them to speak to each other so that you don't have to do those repeated tasks again and again. You basically identify a trigger and you set the workflow or you set the automation so that that trigger enables the system, the apps to speak and it creates a solution or it creates an entry, it creates something for you. So there are so many use cases and so many different template scenarios that you can work around with Zapier. It's a no-code tool and it integrates with more than 3,000 apps that you likely use every single day. It has a free plan that I believe you can create up to five zaps, so every connection is called a zap in Zapier terminology, other integrations and other scenarios, other zaps that you can use. I'm sure you're gonna find stuff that are going to simplify and automate your business processes. Next tool is Integramat, which is also a tool to automate business tasks. And basically it gives you more time to focus on other business things. So it's a really powerful tool with lots of capabilities. In essence, they are similar with Zapier, but I would say as someone who's used both of them, and I've actually worked with Integramat as a sponsor on this channel before, and I am going to link the detailed tutorial of me using Integramat over here, so you can check that out if you're interested. The price point is uh, lower than Zapier, but it is more complex. So if you're really a no code person, if you're, if you really want to stick with the basics, then Integromat could be a little challenging for you. Although they do have a really, really supportive customer support team. So you can get help from them. You can get training from them and solve your scenarios, but it is still uh, more complex, I would say, in terms of the scenarios, in terms of the setup as well. So if you wanted to do something more advanced with uh, more capabilities, I think Integromat might be better option for you. But 
Um, there are cases where you might need to use both of these tools as well. Right now you're seeing on the screen a tweet thread that I recently saw on Bookmark because it is so helpful. It basically uses, um, well, Twitter obviously because it's about Twitter CRM, so building a CRM from Twitter followers. Um, and it uses Integromat, Zapier, and Airtable to connect all those things and basically create a CRM, uh, a contacts database from your Twitter followers. So there might be cases where you're gonna use both of them uh, and make them work together, but there might also be cases where you choose one or the other to automate your business tasks, but this is also a great tool if you wanted to simplify your business tasks. Next tool that I'm gonna recommend is called Figma. It is an online and free interface design tool that is used by so many people these days. Uh, multiple people can view and edit uh, the designs and give feedback directly within the tool itself. So Figma lives in the browser and works on all systems, I think Windows, Chrome, Mac, and Linux. Uh, and the work is autosave, the tool doesn't take up space on your computer, everything lives on the cloud, which is important to state because this is a design focused tool. So what are the use cases? You can create sitemaps, landing pages, uh, presentations, app designs, dashboard designs, and so much more. You can get inspired by checking out maybe other tutorials uh, online, or you can also check out the community explore page that gives a lot of ideas on what is possible to create within Figma. There are also lots of plugins that work with Figma that make your designing process even faster and simpler because uh, that basically removes the barrier of going to different sources, grabbing screenshots, uh, getting maps, getting uh, uh, stock images and all of that and putting them into your design. Uh, with the plugins, they can just easily be um, done within Figma all in the one place. This is a great tool if you're doing any kind of design work, any kind of um, interface uh, design work, this is going to be a really, really good tool uh, to check out, explore and learn more about. Next tool is called Substack and this is a newsletter service that also enables you to take payments and monetize your newsletters. It is a platform where creators and writers can publish, uh, take payments and send newsletters directly to their subscribers. It is somewhat between a blog and a newsletter service. It is not at all like an email marketing tool, so don't confuse with that. This has more of a publishing focus. So you publish the content on the platform and you can choose if you want to have it for free or if you want to monetize your newsletter. People can also access the old issues too, which is something I liked about uh, Substack landing pages. So I'm gonna call them a landing page because I don't know what else to call it. Uh, but you basically, when you sign up for Substack, you get a Substack URL uh, and you can choose to publish uh, for free or monetize it. You can actually create sub pages as well, just like the example you are seeing on the screen right now. Uh, I like that you can access the old issues as well and this is actually what you're seeing right now is one of the Substack newsletters that I've been loving and I've been following really closely. Next tool on my list is Discord and may I call this an advanced version of Slack? I don't know. Or is it a very close competitor of Slack? Maybe that's more accurate. The user interface with Slack and Discord are very similar and no I haven't included Slack on the list today for this this video because I figure that Slack is already used so commonly by so many people and Discord I feel is a new player in the business space and in the creator space. So originally Discord was more synonymous and associated with the gaming space, but nowadays it's being used by a wider audience and there are people that are like Discord super fans basically. I recently started to use Discord through NFT communities and what I'm observing so far is that it's really, really similar to Slack in, in terms of how it looks and how it's structured. Discord was originally associated more with the game gaming space and gaming communities, but nowadays it's all kinds of communities. Creators are building private communities on Discord. I've become more familiar with Discord through NFT communities and my brother keeps trying to educate me around how people are using Discords to create, form um, decentralized anonymous organizations. If this is all new to you, this was also very new to me until very recently. I did a video with my brother on the channel recently around NFT marketing where he talks about or where he kind of uncovers 
remembers what these concepts or terms mean. So if NFT marketing is at all interesting to you, we actually talked about why NFT spaces are using Discord as one of their primary uh, communication channels as well in that video. So I will link that over here. You can go ahead and check that one out. If that's too far away from you, then just ignore it and don't worry about it. Uh, there is a main positioning difference between the two. So Discord is your place to talk and hang out and Slack positions themselves as uh, where work happens. So it does have a more business focus in this sense. Next tool on my list is Loom. And if you haven't tried Loom yet, I highly, highly suggest you start doing as soon as possible. It really cuts down the time that you would spend uh, typing an email or having a meeting to explain something, to go over something. It is a tool that enables you to record your screen and your webcam or both at the same time. So this comes really handy when you're doing any type of tutorials, uh, when you want to explain something to someone by showing it to them. This comes really, really uh, handy. It's really helpful. Um, if you wanted to present something as you are explaining something, again, you can use it in those cases. This is also the tool that I use when I am doing any type of tutorials for my channel as well. So whenever you see a circular frame down the bottom section of my videos when I am doing a screen share and talking you through something, I usually use Loom for that. I also started to use Loom when I'm explaining something to uh, my VA or a team member. It just makes life so much easier. There's not really that much to say about it other than the fact that it's really helpful and start using this in your day-to-day -day, uh, life. Next tool on my list is called Miro and I've been a user of this tool since the times when it was actually called a uh, real-time board. So I believe it was 2015 or 16 when we were using it at the agency that I was working with. That was a remote first agency and because we were a distributed team across the world, uh, these types of collaborative tools that enabled us to uh, do workshops better, to do brainstorming sessions, and to basically create something visual together. So what Miro solves is because we are now more distributed than ever and we need more collaboration tools as we don't get to see each other and we don't get to meet each other in the same room. It kind of brings back that whiteboard uh, thing that we used to have in like meeting rooms and where people would brainstorm, take notes, uh, put stickies, um, you know, color, highlight, whatever, those types of things on the whiteboard. We would do that uh, in that physical whiteboard. Now you can do that on Miro and you can do that collaboratively. You can basically see different people's um, cursors moving around the screen and you can create visual journeys, you can do brainstorming. How we use it in the past was for mapping customer journeys, um, planning marketing campaigns for our clients and it would enable us to simplify uh, what would have been really complex marketing campaigns into something that was more visual and easy to understand and um, present. Next tool I'm going to suggest is called Slido. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it, but it is a tool that lets you interact with your audience and makes uh, meetings and workshops more engaging through polls and quizzes and questionnaires. So if you're hosting a webinar, a meeting or a live session, usually you're gonna realize that the conversation is one way and it tends to get boring uh, if you don't collect input from your audience. And no, the Zoom chat is not enough because what if you wanted to collect some uh, questions for a Q&A session, but you wanted to do that prior to the session. So this was something that we use in the Maven Course Accelerator, which is a program that I was a part of very recently and it made the Q&A sessions so much more impactful and valuable because the questions were already um, asked through this app and people were able to uh, upvote uh, the questions that they also wanted to see. So if there was something that they also wanted to ask and if it was already asked um, on the platform, then you were just able to upvote it so that you make sure that it is going to get answered. I suggest giving this one a try for more inclusive and interactive meeting experiences. And this brings me to the final tool on my list, which is Zoom. And you might be surprised to hear Zoom because it is so obvious and you might be thinking, well, I know how to use Zoom, obviously, Elif, but the thing is, I realized that we mostly use Zoom as a participant, right? So we are sent an invitation link 
and we join the meeting as a participant, but we don't actually manage the meeting or moderate the meeting, or sometimes we don't even send a meeting invite. And I think now that Zoom is such a dominant uh, video communication tool in the market, almost all companies, almost all schools, well, okay, this is just an assumption. I don't know if all schools, but I'm sure that the there is a big a percentage of uh, organizations that are using Zoom. And now that it's kind of like the industry standard, I think it's really important that you are well averse with what you can do with Zoom, how you can uh, create breakout rooms, how you can share screens, how you can share audio, uh, how to moderate the chat, if that is something that is a part of your job maybe, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you're like a, an operations manager or maybe you are a community manager and you are going through the chat. How do you moderate and record the chat? How do you do a meeting recording? How do you do a live stream to different platforms? These are all really important capabilities that the tool offers. And no, they are not all available to free members, but a lot of it is available and you can still learn how to use it and you can just become more familiar with the tool even if you are a free user of Zoom. So I'm just going to suggest that you become more familiar with those other capabilities other than being a participant in Zoom meetings. And that concludes my list of 12 tools that the modern marketer, the creator, or the side hustler should know and use. I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully you took something away from this video. If you did, then don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos on marketing, career, and work life. And if you have suggestions for other tools that you think are essential for marketers to know, then leave them in the comments section below because I think I'm going to keep making more uh, videos similar to this one where I cover uh, different tools for maybe different purposes because I love talking about tools. Anyway, that's a long-winded conclusion to the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe once again, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.